we got a lot of surprising developments from our Baltimore Ravens. And so we can jump straight into it because I know y'all are super busy. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn your notifications on, and leave a like on the video because it helps out the channel a ton. Jumping straight into it. Earlier today, we talked about how Mark Andrews was involved in a car accident. Now, we were grateful that Mark Andrews, he came out of that accident unscathed. He was not hurt at all. So Mark Andrews is good, and that's a beautiful thing. But something that we were unsure of was if there was anybody else who was involved in the accident as well. And it sounds like from this story that there are. Let's read it from ESPN.com. It says, Baltimore Ravens tight end Mark Andrews avoided injury Wednesday morning after being involved in a serious car accident where two vehicles sustained heavy damage, according to Baltimore County Police. The accident occurred while Andrews was driving to the Ravens team facility for training camp. Uh, Mark Andrews said, I appreciate everyone's thoughts and well wishes. This is a great reminder about the importance of wearing seatbelts and remaining alert while driving a car. According to a preliminary report by Baltimore County Police, officers responded to a crash at 9.45 a.m. on the 9700 block of Lions Mill Road, which is one and a half miles from the Ravens facility. No injuries were reported. Police said the case remains open. So that was my favorite part of the story, because like we talked about earlier, we happy for Mark Andrews that he came out of the car accident, not hurt. But we were wondering, were there anybody else involved? And if they there was somebody else involved, did they get hurt? Hopefully not. But this story confirms that there were no injuries reported. So that's a beautiful thing. So we're glad that everybody who was involved in that accident they came away uninjured. And in more unfortunate news, uh, the Ravens offensive line coach, Joe D, um, they said he was hospitalized recently for an acute illness that will require ongoing treatment for an extended period of time. So he'll be away from the Baltimore Ravens for a while. Um, it said that the Ravens, they added George Warhop, uh, most recently the offensive line coach of the Texans, to their coaching staff to sort of take his place. So hopefully whatever Joe D has going on, that can get cleared up pretty quickly. I know they said he's going to be away for a while, but whatever it is, hope it's a, it's a smooth process and it goes even better uh, than expected. So our first surprising development from our Baltimore Ravens was that of Nate Wiggins. And we remember Nate Wiggins in the Baltimore Ravens' first preseason game uh, against the Eagles. He hurt himself making a tackle. I mean, he was making a bunch of plays that night, but he hurt himself making a tackle. So a lot of us were concerned. We were worried. We were like, man, what's going on? But Harbaugh said, it's okay. It's not serious. They did an MRI. They said his shoulder injury that he sustained it was not too bad at all so he should be back out there rather quickly but he was out there a lot earlier than I know I expected I didn't expect to see him for maybe another week or two but he was out there today Jess Rebick said that Nate Wiggins was on the field going through a workout so I said he getting closer he, he getting closer so that's a beautiful thing look I could care less if he plays at all in the rest of the preseason game I he don't need to to me, but I, everybody got their own opinion on that, which is fine. But as long as he's ready for week one, I'm, I'm good. Now, with this next surprise, it kind of took a turn, not necessarily for the worst, but we got hit with a little swerve because there were a lot of people reporting that Arthur Millette was actually at Ravens training camp and he was working with a trainer uh, to the side field during and before practice. So a lot of us were like, oh man, Arthur Millette, he's that much closer to being back already? I know Harbaugh said that he was probably going to miss all of September, so I'm getting all hot. I'm like, man, could he actually be getting ready for the beginning of the regular season? But I'm assuming that Russell Gage must also wear the number 10 uh, because all those reporters, they corrected it. They said, oh, they thought it was Arthur Millette, but it was actually Russell Gage working with the trainers over on the side. But then I thought, like, hold up. Russell Gage, you, you just got here, and he's hurt already? Hopefully not, but if he's working off to the side, then that's normally what that means, that they're recovering from injury. So we'll just try to keep up to date with that and see what's going on with Russell Gage uh, over the next couple of days. Now, when the Baltimore Ravens first signed Anthony Miller, I know a lot of people, they didn't even think twice about it. They thought, okay, this is just another typical signing of the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, what's going to really happen here? I'm not going to get excited over this because it is what it is. But Anthony Miller, especially over these past couple of days, we've been hearing his name a lot when it's come to making plays. Yesterday, they said that he caught a couple of deep balls, and today, it was reported from Jeff Zrebeck, he said, not a very sharp practice for the offense, which had a good number of pre-snap penalties. Ooh, we gotta get those cleaned up, but that's what practice is for. But anyway, he said, Anthony Miller flashed early, and Isaiah Likely and Zay Flowers made their share of catches. So, with Isaiah Likely, and especially with Mark Andrews being out, even with Mark Andrews being in, we've been hearing a whole lot about Isaiah Likely, so that's the 
norm. We we can't take it for granted. We appreciate it a lot, but that's been the norm. Zay Flowers, same thing. We hear about Zay Flowers making plays literally every single day. So that's a beautiful thing too. But with Anthony Miller, this newcomer, him coming on the scene, could he be a nice little surprise, nice little secret weapon for the Baltimore Ravens? I know he, he made some plays over in Chicago. He certainly did, especially early on in his career. And then I know he had a little fallout with management and whatnot. But could this be the resurgence for Anthony Miller's career? Hey, y'all don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Could he end up being sort of a Corey Graham but on offense for the Baltimore Ravens? I hope so. It's always nice when somebody who you ain't really been hearing too much about they start making plays. And Jeff Rebick reported that Kyle Hamilton had an interception of Lamar Jackson. That's not a surprise at all. We know super duper Kyle, he gonna do his thing. But the fact that he's been out there practicing, especially after that scare. Oh man, thank you, Kyle. Anyway, uh, he said Bo Braid also picked off Lamar Jackson, but it was nullified by an offside penalty. But still, hey. He still made that play. He can't do nothing about that offsides, but or maybe the offsides, maybe the offside pressure got to Lamar and they was they jumped a little early, so they got a little closer to Lamar. That forced him to throw that pass maybe a little bit earlier than Bo Bray jumped it. But regardless, Bo Bray, he made the play. So that's really good for him. That's really good for him, especially since Ravens, they got a lot of safeties right now. They got about 84 safeties on the team. But anyway, that wasn't even a surprise there. That's good for Bo Bray, though. But this part right here, David Ajabo. We ain't really been hearing his name too often, but David Ajabo had a strip sack and is starting to stack some practices. That's what we like to see. So I guess he just, he really getting in the groove of things now. I know Harbaugh talked about him the other day, said that he should be cleared to play in a game very soon. He has not been cleared yet. But he should be cleared to play in a game soon. Uh, I'm thinking if he's cleared uh, over this next week, he'll probably play some in the last preseason game and then be ready for week one because we need all the pass rush and more that we can get from jump because we're going up against Patrick Mahomes real soon. Now, something that's not a surprise at all. Um, Harbaugh did confirm that Lamar Jackson will not be playing in Saturday's preseason game. Uh, and Jeff Rebick said the Ravens will continue to hold out many of their veteran starters. Now, I know there's been not too much back and forth with this from Ravens fans because us as Ravens fans, we've been scarred enough times. We've seen enough players go down in preseason to injury, and it's just it's not pretty. It sucks. It's terrible. It's annoying. It's frustrating. And then you always think about the what ifs. And uh, like I've said before, I think 2021 really just changed John Harbaugh. It changed his mindset when it came to playing starters in the preseason, especially significant starters. When J.K. Dobbins suffered that nasty injury in preseason, that just completely changed the trajectory of his career for the worse. Uh, I think it was at that point where Harbaugh was like, all right, nope, I ain't risking it no more. I, 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 I've done enough risking and I'm done. So from that point, I mean, minus Nate Wiggins playing into the third quarter in the preseason, we won't get. But anyway, from that point, he has not really been playing starters like that in the pre. Well, then there was Trent Simpson the other day, too. But for the most part, he has not been playing a veteran starters in the preseason like that. So the fact that Lamar Jackson won't be playing in the game and then a lot of other veterans, too. It ain't really no shocker there. Team Keep It Clean, always appreciate when y'all send in questions because I love answering these in the video. We have a lot of fun with them. I love y'all. If y'all would like to send in a question to be featured in the video, you can send it to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com. Or if you're a Team Keep It Clean patron, you can just send it directly on Patreon. So this next question came from my guy Gus. He said, with the new season coming up around the corner, do you think the Ravens make another big move via trade or in free agency at a position in need of depth or improvement? Big move, no. A move, I could see that, but big move, no, because um, that's just not what they do. Uh, they have, they have like five mil, some five million change in cap space, and not saying that that's an excuse for them to not make a move, because like we always say, when there's a wheel. There is a way. If you want to get something done, you absolutely can. You got so many different avenues you could take to get the job done. But uh, I don't see the Baltimore Ravens making a big move via trade. And even in free agency, I don't think anything could be considered a big move in free agency because 
guys are still free agents. I don't even want to say guys are still free agents for a reason because some of these guys are really good and some of these guys are really established veterans that just have not found a home yet. So we'll see what happens with some of them. But I, I can't consider anything that the Baltimore Ravens that I would expect them to do big. But I could see them making a move to just to get some depth uh, on their roster, maybe an offensive line. Uh, he said, number two, do you think the Ravens will have enough cap to re-sign all three? Tyler Linderbaum, Isaiah Likely, and Super Duper Kyle Hamilton. And if you had to pick two and let one, why are you doing this to me? Why are you doing this to me? Especially those three, man. Why are you, do why are you doing this to me, man? Why? Come on now. Why, why are you doing this to me? So first, the first part of the question, do you think the Ravens will have enough cap to re-sign all three, Linderbaum, Likely, and Kyle Hamilton? Yes. But if you had to pick two and let one walk, who would you re-sign and who would you let walk and why? Man, the why, I wouldn't want to let, let nobody walk. But here's a kicker. Uh, if I had, man, I, I can't pick two out of the three. That's, that's so tough, man. Like, I, I feel like this personal, man. How am I going to like, because any two that I pick and letting one walk, it's going to be the wrong decision, no matter which way it goes. And, but, but with that, because I know, I, I'm pretty sure a lot of people are gonna would, would say Linderbaum and, and Hamilton and then let Likely walk because we got Mark Andrews. But I, I do not think that the Baltimore Ravens would re-sign both Isaiah Likely and Mark Andrews. I think when that time comes, it's going to end up being one or the other. But continuing, his next question, he said, uh, my dad is so hard on Rashad Bateman, calling him a bust and all because he's constantly injured. He's even went as far as to say the Ravens should not have re-signed him. Can you break down why you think or know the Baltimore Ravens re-signed him? I said route running and his ability to get open with decent yak. The reason that, in my opinion, why the Baltimore Ravens re-signed Rashad Bateman is because they did not have to do the fifth year option with him. And they re-signed him to an extremely cheap deal. And ex extremely, like, there's some deals when people will say, oh, that deal's team-friendly. But the player, they really benefited from it. Their deal is, like, 99% Ravens team-friendly, 1% Rashad Bateman friendly. So, it's like, it's a still. And the way it is for the Baltimore Ravens, the way I look at it, and I, th I think the way that they look at it, too, Rashad Bateman, first round draft pick. The talent's there. They just got to get it out of them. Got to stay healthy, get involved in the game and whatnot. Make plays when your number's called. Okay, cool. But with Rashad Bateman, if he can reach, finally reach those expectations, meet those expectations that the Baltimore Ravens and a lot of people have for him, especially being a first round pick at the wide receiver position, then this deal that he signed to, it'll be a steal. It, it, it'll really be a steal right now I don't think it's a steal because we haven't gotten to see him exceed expectations yet but once Rashad Bateman breaks out once he actually exceeds those expectations then we're gonna look back at this deal like oh my goodness we got him for like five mil per year these receivers are going for 27 28 Brandon Ayuk could end up getting third we'll see but these receivers going for a crazy amount of money and then they're really good now those are the proven guys. You got your Tyreek Hill, your Jalen Waddle, Brandon Ayuk, CeeDee Lamb getting ready to get paid. Justin Jefferson just got his bread. And obviously those are the elites of the elite at the wide receiver position. But with Rashad Bateman having him for five mil per, I know the Ravens are banking on like, oh, yeah, hopefully we can look back at this deal and realize like, oh, man, we got him signed for a couple more years for super, super cheap. But – also, while hoping that he ends up lev leveling up his game as well. He said, again, hope you and the family are doing well. And like Patrick Queen this offseason, I'm out. Hey, appreciate you, man. Next question came from my guy, Jarvo. He said, can't wait for the regular season. I need three to five Ravens predictions for the season. Oh, I'm going to give you three. One, uh, the Baltimore Ravens at least make the AFC Championship. Number two, Lamar Jackson is yet again an MVP finalists uh number three derrick henry actually goes over a thousand yards now when i say actually 
as it's because I expect him to be right around that number, maybe a thousand, eleven hundred. I don't expect him to get thirteen or fifteen hundred, nothing like that. Only because with Derrick Henry, I expect his numbers to take a bit of a dip because he ain't gonna be the only guy on this offense. At Tennessee, he wasn't necessarily the only guy, but he was the guy. And this Baltimore Ravens offense. Obviously, Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson is the guy. Everything goes through him. But with Derrick Henry, you you got Mark and Zay Flat. Like so, you got a lot of different people that are consistent contributors to this Baltimore Ravens offense, and that's such a beautiful thing. So with Derrick Henry, I do expect his yards to dip a little bit, but I do expect his touchdowns to go way up so i guess that's actually four predictions so we got a little bonus one and he also said if a genie gave you three wishes but you can only use them for the ravens what would they be your wishes could be 10 super bowls maybe resign trade or sign a player that we miss out on or maybe you as gm hello me as gm no y'all ain't gonna be making videos about me talking about i'm trash and i'm sorry and i don't know how to draft and i don't know who to resign and who to no y'all ain't gonna be doing that to me but um if a genie could give me three wishes for the Baltimore Ravens, my number one would be that nobody gets hurt. That would be the one, that nobody gets hurt. Another one would be that every single Ravens game, the refs call it fairly. Ain't no okie doking ain't no funny business, no none of that. Um, and my third would be that the Baltimore Ravens, they treat the wide receiver position like they actually care about it.